Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Munif, a self-made multimillionaire with multiple brick and mortar businesses that have closed billions of dollars of sales. I'm not here to sell you anything. My purpose is to teach you what it takes to become a successful person through life experiences that I have that have been real to me. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Americans are ambitious, and after all, ambition has been deeply ingrained in our history. It is an integral part of our character and what makes this country exceptional. It has been expressed by trying to achieve the American dream, our country's guiding principle, an ideal that states that every American citizen, regardless of status, gender, and age, should have an equal opportunity for success and prosperity through hard work, determination, and initiative. Just look at me. I come from very humble beginnings, but could climb my way up to where I am today because I had drive and ambition to get out of my situation. Now, I'm extremely proud to be a product of the projects, but it's an environment that taught me a lot. My American dream was to provide more for my own children and family than I got in the beginning. This shows that achieving the American dream through hard work, determination, and initiative is possible. This belief has been widely spread, especially in today's society, as evidence of the growing grind culture. Americans are obsessed with success and even willing to work a few more hours to attain it. In fact, according to a recent research, 40% of Americans have a side hustle as of December 2020, and more than 36% plan to do so in the coming years. And among those surveyed, 59% of Gen Z and 61% of millennials admittedly have a side hustle. As for those who are planning to have one or two side hustles, I've heard them asking around how those people juggle one full-time job and two to three side hustles. I also have some people asking me for advice on how I go on with my life by managing nine different businesses and still have enough time to spend with my family and enjoy a few days of vacation here and there. That's why in today's video, I'll be sharing with you some of the habits that I have implemented in my life that have helped me become more productive, more efficient, regardless of how much I have to do. So here we go. Number one, track your time. I know many of you think this is a tedious process and I bet only a few of you will take this advice seriously. But if you plan on having two or three side hustles on top of your eight or nine hour full time job, or you're like me, managing up to nine different businesses simultaneously, this is one habit that will definitely make a difference, a huge difference when it comes to increasing your productivity and efficiency. I'm not saying do it every day. When it comes to tracking time, you do it once or twice a week, where you sit down for a couple hours, write down things you did for the last week or two, write down how much time you spent working on a specific task and how much time you spent on cooking and eating, even getting on social media accounts or working out. Just track how much time you spend on certain activities. This is similar to when you're trying to build wealth. The first thing you should do is to understand how much money is coming in and out of your pockets to establish a budget for your savings, your expenses, your investments. It is similar to that. By tracking your time, you'll get a bigger picture of where where you are spending it productively, or maybe you're just wasting your time on something that is meaningless, like maybe staring at the ceiling in your room or watching some nonsense on social media reels. For instance, when you go to work, instead of tackling your most important task, you go on for an hour or two checking and reading all your emails, which does not even directly impact your productivity. By tracking your time, you get to see areas of improvement and where you currently stand when it comes to managing your time. Number two, eat that frog. So this came from Mark Twain, whose words were, eat a live frog first thing in the morning and nothing worse will happen to you the rest of the day. Which is also interpreted by the self-help guru, Brian Tracy, as a suitable metaphor for effectively managing your time. The idea here is that you tackle the most important, most complex, most annoying, most tedious task first thing in the morning and the rest of your day will go smoothly. This is one of my favorite books. It's low cost, you can get it on Amazon. I'm not plugging it, but I'm just saying it's one of those books that really did make a huge difference in my life. The thing about frogs is that they are annoying when they start croaking. And when male frogs croak, female frogs also flock around them and start croaking as well, making loud noises that won't stop for a few minutes and sometimes hours. So if you don't wanna eat a frog first, meaning you don't wanna tackle the most important, difficult task first, it will linger at the back of your mind. You'll keep thinking about what you need to do, but since you think of it as difficult and time consuming and tedious and annoying, you keep pushing it to the end of your to-do list. And while you're already doing other stuff, you're also thinking about that important task, taking away your attention and your focus, just like an annoying male frog croaking and vying for that attention of that female frog. 
so it can linger at the back of your head, distracting you. As a result, your efficiency will decrease since you keep being distracted by that task that keeps getting delayed. There's also a word called procrastination that you should look up. That's why you must eat that frog first thing in the morning, get it out of the way. I know it's disgusting, but if you can get that out of the way, nothing will stop you from becoming productive and efficient. Number three is the Swiss cheese method. The Swiss cheese method is a tool to defeat procrastination. As I have mentioned earlier, people tend to delay important, tedious, and difficult tasks to the end of their to-do list. And more often than not, I'll do it later. Can easily be changed to, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week, I'll do it next year. Then that next day can be turned into the next week. If you pass it to another person, you're lucky. But in reality, that would not be easy or it might just be impossible overall. And if you have a list of a few more difficult tasks or big projects lined up, that would only be piled up more if you push it aside, putting you in a more difficult situation of never catching up. Chances are, when you decide to tackle those tasks, you will already be in a rush and the quality of your work will decrease significantly. Mostly the reason for this in the case of big projects is that we become overwhelmed by how big and time consuming and difficult the task is. So to solve that dilemma, you can use the Swiss cheese method. So the idea is that you break down your bigger task into smaller morsels or smaller pieces that you can do in a shorter amount of time. I suggest doing subtasks in 10 minutes so you can customize it to your needs depending on what type of project you're doing. For instance, you wanna try real estate investing so instead of writing a to-do list, I'll start real estate investing tomorrow, which I am sure you won't be able to do. Break it down to something like this. Number one, or day one, choose a real estate investment strategy. You can spend a few hours studying what kind of strategy you would like to adopt and choose one that will suit your financial capacity, your skills, and your goals. So day number two, pick a target market. Real estate investing is a business and every business needs a market. So spend your second day studying on where that target market is. So then day number three comes, decide on your investment property criteria. So what is your investment property criteria? Is it commercial real estate? Is it multifamily? Is it single family home? Anyway, let us not go through the whole process of real estate investing. The point is to break down your big project of investing in real estate into smaller, more specific tasks. It's like punching a hole in Swiss cheese. It will make it less overwhelming and a lot more manageable. I call this incremental change and you can apply this to any habit. You wanna quit smoking? You're doing two packs? Cut that down by one cigarette and pretty soon you've established a habit. Number four, choosing when to say yes and when to say no. Everybody demands time of you, your family, your friends, your colleagues, your work, your hobbies, etc. Time is very valuable and a limited resource, one that can never be recovered once it's spent. So saying yes to everything will drain the valuable resource that you have and your energy in turn will be ruined and so will your productivity. So just imagine that you're at work and your hand is already full from your task and a co-worker approaches you asking for a favor to cover their shift because he wants to celebrate his birthday with his family. This is fine once in a while, but what if he asks you every time there's a celebration like his daughter's birthday or his wife's birthday or his parents' birthday? And since you keep saying yes, he keeps asking and it's been going on for years. And there you are being scolded by your loved one because you can't spend enough time with them. It'll be tough at first, especially if you have difficulties turning other people down but you really should learn when to say yes and when to say no. You only have 24 hours in a day and you need to budget like it's your money. As I mentioned earlier in this video, spend it on things that matter to you the most. You can do that by saying no to the things that will eventually eat away your time for rest, for yourself, for your family, and only saying yes to something that you can fully commit to without sacrificing the important things in life. Here's another Brian Tracy quote that I have. The things that matter the most in life should never be at the mercy of the things that matter the least. Thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. And for that, here's a bonus tip. Seriously, take a break once in a while. I know that grind culture is increasingly being integrated in our work environment and we look at social media and there are some proponents of the grind culture and I commend you for having that grit and drive to work to your goals. However, you should take care of yourself and take a few hours or a few days off to unwind and refresh your mind. In my case, I go on vacation with my family for even a few days and I come back even more inspired and motivated. You know, in order to keep my mind out of the hustle and bustle of managing my businesses, and believe me or not, the most effective and creative ideas often come from me during or after a vacation. So yeah, taking a break is definitely a must have if you want to achieve maximum efficiency. I also take breaks throughout the day and it helps me get in that creative spirit and vibe to be able to create more and be more productive. Take a walk at least a few times a day to get those juices moving. That's all for today's video guys. Thank you for watching and don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. To learn more about personal development tips, check out this video, how to develop your communication skills.